Let's start off with, I think, what is going to be the headline for the next several days. Um, and that is the J.K. Dobbins injury. Uh, MRI test results confirmed today that uh, J.K. Dobbins has a full tear of his ACL. Brutal. And his season is done before it starts. Um, he, what a shame for, I think, somebody that had potential as a top 10 back easily. Um, depending on what that workload and snap share was going to be between him and Gus Edwards. Yeah. Um, but now with him out of the way, what do you think? Uh, what do you think the potential is for Gus Edwards? I mean, all aboard the Gus bus, right? I mean, I was already on it for the last couple of weeks. You were, uh, trying to make the wheels on his bus, not go round and round. And I'm trying to get on and go around the block <laughs> over and over again, take everybody to school, drop them off. Um, I mean, Holy cow, man. Gus Edwards suddenly on the, you know, one of the highest rushing teams in the NFL. There's nobody else. Supposedly Todd Gurley, you know, is rumored. He was there for a visit in June that they might bring him in to try to get some of the load off of Gus. But this sets up so good for him, man. It, it does. It probably helps Lamar Jackson at least a little bit. It just sucks for JK Dobbins. So you really would not be concerned at all if the Ravens add uh, Todd Gurley to the team? You really would be not be concerned. Did you watch him last year? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he okay. was he was bad. He's like only twenty seven. Can you believe he's only twenty seven? No, what a precipitous fall from grace for him, where he was one of the most electrifying players in all of football. Um, I, I, I would not be concerned at all. I mean, you will, if you watched a, a Falcons game last year, you saw Brian Hill come in and look like twice the back that Todd Gurley was. It's, it's not surprising that he's not on a team currently. I, back to Gus, we talked about it. He has averaged over five yards of carry his entire career. When he gets the carries, he produces. There is nothing holding him back now from being an RB1, honestly, because he's going to have that many runs every week. And if he stays healthy, he's just crazy. Like, it would not be surprising to see him put up Mike Davis type numbers last year after Christian McCaffrey got hurt, right? I mean, it, th that would be the comp. What about Lev Bell? Lev Bell's only 29. I, I would not be afraid of anything that they brought in. All right. So, okay. So say they bring in somebody, because I think it's probably a decently safe bet that they bring in somebody because Fair. all that's left on the roster behind Gus is Justice Hill, Tyson Williams, and Nate McCrary, which is a who, who, and who situation. So you got to think that they might try to add a name, much like the Rams added a name. Do you, yep. if they add somebody, do you think it becomes more than a 20 to 30% share just to give Gus a break? You still think it's Gus's show? Yeah. I, even if it is 30%, I don't, I don't care. I, I would be shocked if it's more than that. Uh, pro per pro football focus. Um, Gus Edwards is the fifth ranked uh, running back based on their grade since 2018. Uh, and he's averaged 5.1 yards per an attempt, which is also fifth uh, in that same time frame. So he's super effective when he gets the ball, uh, assuming that he's going to have, I don't know, top 10 uh, in rushes, rush attempts this year. I, I don't know how you don't throw him as an RB1 at I mean, they're, they're, that's his floor, honestly. There, there's no way that he finishes worse than that if he stays healthy. It's just not possible. I agree. Yeah, so I was asking all those questions just to get your take on it, but I completely agree. Uh, I think for me, his absolute floor, Gus Edwards' absolute floor now is an RB1. Like, that running back, they also, you know, they were already had the most rush attempts in the league last year. Um. Gus and, Edwards. And, and I don't see them not having the most this year either. No. I, 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 I would absolutely. be blown away if they're not number one in rush attempts. Gus Edwards had a 50% snap share or better in only two games last season. 
So it's it's really I mean that's gonna be every game he's gonna get at least half the snaps. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. He had ten or more rushing attempts in only six games, and in those six games that he had at least ten rushing attempts, he averaged uh, double digit fantasy points per game at ten. So you think what do you want him to do? He's at least gonna. I think at worst you're talking ten fantasy points a game at worst. Yep. Where, I, where where do you draft him? Are, are you looking end of round two? You're looking beginning of round three? Is that too high? And you just hope that he falls further and t- you maybe can get him in the fourth because people are for some reason just sleeping on him? Oh, man, that is an excellent question, right? That's what everybody wants to know is where are you actually going to draft him? So let's talk about it. So in the second round, I'll name the running backs in order and you tell me when to stop when you would rather have Gus Edwards. Sure. Joe Mixon, Antonio Gibson, Austin Eckler, Najee Harris, Clyde Edwards, Alaire. It's probably right. It's probably right there. I'd probably take him in front of Clyde. And that order was not our draft, our ranking order. That is just a, a a mock draft that we did. Um, Yeah. So you would take him before Clyde Edwards Alaire. Yeah, and after Najee. Because I, I think those I think those first four guys that you named off there, three, I don't know, my memory's bad, but I think all those guys are equally as Bell Cowish. Um and Clyde uh we'll have Daryl uh Daryl Henderson or sorry, um Daryl Williams kind of crawling up his back um in that offense, at least marginally. Um, so that's why I would, I would draw the line right there. So that's probably the end of the second round. And then I want to confirm a couple other guys that are going later that I think have the bell cow role as well. Okay. Um, David Montgomery. Uh, I would probably take him in front of Montgomery. You would take Gus Edwards over David Montgomery. All right. Uh, Deandre probably. Swift. Just, just, just cause the bears line is so, so bad. Uh, I would take him in front of Swift because I think the Ravens team is better than Detroit. All right, Even uh, though Swift has the four with catches. Last couple. Chris Carson. I would definitely take him before Chris Carson. James Robinson. I would take him before James Robinson. Okay. But it's close. Yeah. I mean, I think he's uh, for sure locked in. Running back one with all the the potential to get, you know, two to three touchdowns in any given game in any given week. Yeah. Like he's going to be the short yardage back. The only thing that they might try to add is maybe somebody for third down usage. But I think that that could really just be Justice Hill. And Mm -hmm. if it's a short yardage situation, if it's less than five yards, then he might also just get left in. Right. Because they're running options so much. and. He has the ability to get a first down on the ground. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm i really excited, I think, to actually see what a featured back can do in this offense because it's been split for a little while now and all of last year. So, yeah, Gus Edwards had nine catches for 129 yards on 13 targets last <laughs> year. So hey, nine out of 13. I don't know. That ain't bad. No, I know, right? I mean, he's he's not being put in that position to do it, but that doesn't mean he can't do it. There's there's just better options, and now that those options are gone, uh, you know, who who's to say that that he won't get checked down to more? Right, Gus Edwards, running back one. You heard it here first. 